Okay, I'm back. So for this portion, if you wanted to add lights to your painting like I'm going to, you're going to need a drill. Uh, this is my little drill. <laughs> and then I have little drill bits. I'm going to use the, f it's called 564th um, drill bit. There's a 116th and a 332. I'm going to start with this one. I think it's going to be a good size. I'm going to see, if I have to, I can go to a larger one um, to make the holes. Now the only thing with these canvases that I've noticed is if I flip it over, you're going to see that there's the thick portion of the back. So the painting goes all the way to the edge, but this part to drill through, i got to drill through quite a ways. So this part's super easy to drill through in the middle. But I think I might like a few stars on the edges, so if I drill through, I'll have to drill through all the way and then stick this little piece here and basically I'm going to be taping them down. So this has, these lights have 50, 50 little LEDs per set. So I got to make 50 holes in <laughs> the painting. So. I'm going to put this little drill bit in and then do the 50 holes. So it might get a little loud. This is me putting the drill bit in. <laughs> okay, so this is for the stars. So I'm just going to start to make some holes in the painting. Now this might be scary for some people, but I mean, if it ends up breaking it, I could redo another one. So, 50 holes. Okay, well that's one. I just wanted to show you. <laughs> that is one little hole. And I'm curious to see if that little hole is going to be big enough for a star, if this is going to actually work, or if I need to make it bigger. Well, it does show through, which is pretty cool. So you can see the twinkly little light there. <laughs> I'm just holding the uh, LED up against the hole. So that's kind of my idea to have a bunch of different stars. I'm just taking a look. I think that's going to look pretty cute with that size drill bit. I don't know if I want to go any bigger with the stars. Because there's going to be 50 of them, so it's going to be quite a bit. Okay. Oops. We'll turn those lights off. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to make 50 holes, and then I'm going to have to tape the lights to the back. And I'm just going to put them randomly, wherever. It's just like a like stars. You could do a constellation in here if you wanted to. Like if you wanted to do a constellation of something in the sky, you could totally do that. Okay, so that's a lot of holes. <laughs> Should have counted them. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start seeing how it's going to work out. So some of them you really got to drill through because the paint <laughs> the paint ends up uh, covering it back over. So just something to watch out for, and just make sure that none of the wood covers over the holes again. I'm 
But I think that's looking pretty good. Now I did do some on the edges where it goes through the thicker part of the wood. So you can see the holes in there. And just make sure that none of the wood is blocking the hole so that the light will shine through. So sometimes you just gotta peel off the little bits and baubles. Just gonna move that <laughs> so it doesn't stick in the painting. And as for the lights, so just gonna see, like I might make these holes a little bit bigger but I'm gonna tape a few down and see kinda how it's gonna work out. Going to use I think I'm just gonna use some masking tape. Well it's not good masking tape. <laughs> I'll use some painters tape. Just to stick a few down and kind of see how this is gonna look. So there's one up here. So my plan was is I'm just gonna cover the hole. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'm just gonna cover the hole with the light facing into the hole. And then tape it. So that's kind of an end piece and then I kinda gotta reach the next hole. So here's the other LED light. So I'm just going to put that over the hole and tape it down. Like so. <laughs> and basically I would just keep going about feeding this through so that the light covers the hole, which I can probably take that to just like that and then it covers it and then you just tape it down. And so now I'm just going to turn it on. And let's flip it over. You can kind of see here, we got the lights happening. In those holes. So if I cover this up so it's not as apparent. <laughs> or maybe put it underneath. Yeah, if I light up the underneath, you can kind of see the holes all lighting up. So these ones I taped. So I'm just going to take a look if I should make the uh, the holes a little bigger. They are kind of nice and small like little twinkly lights. And I gotta do quite a few more holes, so I think I might leave them. But I think you guys can see them. Here, let me put my hand here. <laughs> can you see the twinkly lights? So right now I only have a few taped and I just threw the rest underneath, but that's kind of the idea, is that they will uh, twinkle in behind the deer. So I'm gonna keep going. Uh, I'm going to count how many holes I have and I'm going to have to tape up some all along the way and then I'll resin.
So I got a fair number of them taped. <laughs> um, you're probably wondering why I'm covering them and taping them. Well, when I pour the resin, I want the lights to block the holes. Because the resin is going to probably fall through these holes. So if I tape them down, block them, there shouldn't be too much resin that falls into the holes. So I'm just going to keep going and cover them all. <laughs> Okay, everybody, so <laughs> now you can see the stars. I'm just going to hide the light shining through the trees at night. Pretty cool, hey? So it took a little bit of work. Um, I drilled almost 50 holes, but I just had a few extra length that I needed. This is the... And then I just taped them all down. So I'm going to turn this so you can see. So I'm just using painter's tape. Um, <laughs> super simple. Just taped them in place. They're all blocking the holes. I think it looks super cute. Maybe I'll see if I can find a... A block here so I can block the <laughs> block the light so you guys can see it see the stars kind of shining okay there you go <laughs> so now you can see the twinkly lights in there on there oh, I think it looks awesome so cute for Christmas as a display then you have the beautiful cells with the flash. This gorgeous uh, paint, this turquoise flash, aqua flash. Really pretty. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a coat of Liquidex gloss and then I'm going to resin the whole thing. So. I'm doing the coat of Liquidex gloss just in case it helps me identify if there's any grease areas still left from the silicone. So, I mean, you could do it. I should have probably done it before I applied the vinyl um, and drilled all the holes. <laughs> but that's okay. It's just going to, it's a it dries clear and when you pour the resin over you don't even see it. So, the important thing to remember is that the holes are clear. And they don't have any little pieces of wood still left or paint. So I'm just using a, a push pin <laughs> to make sure that all the holes are actually clear and there's no little pieces still stuck in there. So the light can shine through. But I think it's a pretty cute project for Christmas. And it's going to look awesome on the wall and I can't wait to resin it. So the resin will probably fall a little bit in these holes so I'll have to keep an eye on it. Um because there'll be a little dip but uh, yeah I can always put a second layer of resin on afterwards too if we get some divots where these holes are but the Liquidex gloss might actually go in there and seal them so that might actually be a good thing either way on the back that's why I taped all the lights to the holes to block them so that if resin or anything falls through it's not gonna drip at the back and it'll actually seal it so and all the lights are in place now so I think it looks pretty cool and I'm excited to finish it up so I'm gonna mix up some resin or actually first I'm gonna do the Liquidex gloss and I'll show you guys so I would have I should have probably done the Liquidex gloss before doing the vinyl and the holes but 
that's okay. <laughs> now you guys know to do the Liquidex gloss before and uh, and then you wouldn't have any issues but I like doing Liquidex gloss before resin because if I have any like I said greasy silicone still on there it's gonna let me know because it's gonna reject it so I'm just brushing off anything so I put my Liquidex gloss just in here We didn't cover up any holes there, did we? <laughs> so the nice part is I'm just going to spread it all around. And I can see my puppy's about to play with his squeaky toy. <laughs> oh well, what do you do? All right, and then some down here. So I don't even mind that I'm putting Liquidex gloss over top of the vinyl. It kind of bubbles up, but when you put the resin over top of the whole thing, it's not even going to make a difference. So if you're worried, don't worry about it. The resin is going to eliminate any of the bumpiness from that. Or you can do it ahead of time before. Beautiful. Okay, I gotta let that dry. And then I can do resin. Okay, so it was a process, but <laughs> I have finally taped all of the um, lights in place not the prettiest but you know <laughs> it works now I'm gonna be resining the front but what happens is is I gotta put some tape along the edges before I resin because otherwise we're gonna get drips that are gonna form and I want those to come off so I just grabbed some painter tape And I'm just going to run it along the edge. And just cut back from the very corner. And this way, um, you can just add the tape back in there. Um, when the resin, just push it down so that when the resin falls over the edges and pulls underneath it tends to tends to leave these uh, drip marks but if you do this you can peel this off and the drip marks will disappear so anytime you have an underside that you need to get done and you don't want those resin drip marks just put some tape on before you resin like so and I'm just taping right over all the wires and everything and I'll work it out after I might permanently <laughs> tape all that down somehow <laughs> But the painter's tape is actually holding it down pretty good, so. So this is just for the resin drips that I don't want. And I can't really see the edge, so I'm just trying to line this up so you guys can see it. <laughs> There we go. And just make sure to really push it down. Not so much on this side, but right against the edge. Okay, and now it's ready to resin. So with this, I'm probably going to tape this up just in the middle so that resin doesn't get on it. 
and that way it'll stay clear of the resin and if any resin goes on the plastic I don't have to worry about this thing kind of <laughs> getting covered in resin and then not working so I'm just gonna tape it like so and that way it'll just hang underneath and stay clear of the resin. So that is ready for resin. Sweet. And the only thing I need are my triangles. Alright, here are my triangles. I'm going to prop this up to do resin on. The nice part is they're plastic. So the resin doesn't really stick to it. You can just kind of plop it off. Now important thing with resin is to make sure it's level. Okay, now that we have everything ready to go, resin I have mixed up. And then I use art resin. Uh, links in the description there to get it off of Amazon. The nice part about art res is they also have a calculator I'm just popping some of the bubbles they also have a calculator online if you have to figure out your square footage so make sure everything's clean wiped off we have the tape on the back so it's good and we're pretty much ready to go so I'm going to pour the resin on. Like so. And I have my lovely spreaders. <laughs> just make sure to get it to all the sides and always wear your gloves with art re with any kind of resin but art resin you can do inside and sometimes I'll just use my gloves to spread that last little bit so I don't get a huge amount that goes over the edge just a little bit and it's really important to make sure so I leveled my canvas first I'm curious to see how much of the resin is going to actually fall through the holes <laughs> where the stars are. Either way, the lights are blocking the holes, and I have tape. So, resin will naturally bubble up on the edges too, which is kind of nice. You just have to spread it. Make sure you get a nice even coating. And I like to just kind of wipe the edges a little bit. So I don't get a huge amount of drippage. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to have to torch. I'm going to take one glove off because I've gotten way too much resin on my torch. <laughs> so torching will get rid of all the bubbles and give you nice clear resin. Okay, so I can see some of the resin being rejected on the edge. I knew I might have to do a second coat on this because 
I believe that the resin's going to go down some of these holes and it might create divots, so that's okay. I kind of figured there might be a second coat required. I'm just adding a little bit extra resin. where it's kind of coming apart. So I can see some of the resin going down these little holes. But hopefully it will stop. <laughs> Not drip all the way through, although that one seems to be continually falling through, so it's probably dripping out the bottom. <laughs> You can just take a look. There's actually a big divot here. So that's why I put Liquidex Gloss on first is usually to get rid of the silicone. But you just never know. Sometimes you might have missed a little bit. And if I look side profile in the light I can kind of see if I have any divots going on, but as it sits it might sink into those holes a lot more. So that's where a second coat would come in. And then I just finalize by popping some more bubbles. Get a nice clear coat. Beautiful. So I'm going to let that sit and it's going to take 12 hours to dry to the touch, 72 for a full cure.